Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by. I'm Bob Polinski, Master of Wine. I'm on holiday in northern Michigan. You can see the lake behind me. I'm going to be hanging out there a bit later today. But right now I'm going to do a video on the wines from Aldi. Before coming up to this part of the state, I stopped at an Aldi. I picked up six bottles of wine. I selected three wines that are among their top sellers, and I chose three others that caught my eye and I thought had some potential. The total cost for the six wines was under $40. Now over the years, I've been in only a few Aldi's within the US. Where I live in Northern California, Aldi doesn't exist, but I've been in several in Europe. And my feeling is the selection there is broader, a bit deeper than what you're finding in the US. But I know the Aldi wines are extremely popular and I'm curious to do the tasting, so let's get to it. Aldi has 10,000 stores across 20 different countries. Before I get into the tasting, just a few general observations on shopping for wine in Aldi. Everything there is private label. The assortment is very limited. Uh, there was less than 100 different types of wines there. The highest price point that I saw was a $24.99 price for champagne, but the vast majority of wines are under $10. A good number of them are under $5. Now, with the six wines that I picked up, I was surprised that only one of them had a screw cap. And looking at the range of wines in their total assortment, very few wines had screw caps. Uh, they all had some sort of cork closure. Some of the closures that I had for this tasting are the synthetic closures. Also, I didn't notice anything that had an eco-friendly message. I noticed nothing that was sustainable or organic. People are really looking for that in today's, today's market, so that may be an opportunity as well. And as for the glass that I'm using, I have something very basic today. This is just an old school Libby wine glass. That's what I have here in Northern Michigan, and that's what I'm gonna have to do the tasting with. The assortment is limited with each wine having multiple facings. The first wine is Winking Owl Pinot Grigio at $3.45. Looking at the label for wine one, uh, I see on the back label, it shows this was bottled in Modesto, which indicates this has a, a link to Gallo. There's also an 877 or a toll-free number on the back label as well. I tried calling that number, didn't get through to anyone. Uh, I'm kind of curious as to what sort of message they may have. But in terms of the wine itself, uh, it has a, a pale color to it. It looks really fresh and bright. There is no vintage on this wine, so this is obviously a blend of a few different vintages, but by the color of it, it actually does look quite fresh. Okay, the aroma on this wine, uh, it actually has a non-wine smell to it. There's actually a bit of almost like a chemical sort of smell. Uh, not getting much fruit, not getting much of an herbal characteristic to it. Uh, I've got to say the aroma on this wine, not, not very pleasant. This is a wacky Pinot Grigio. Uh, there's a bit of a cloying sweetness to it. It's light, uh, but that funky chemical characteristic follows through the palate. This is, this is not a very good start for this tasting. This wine is really quite rough, and this is, this is bad stuff. Steer clear. The next up is the exquisite collection Sauvignon Blanc at $9.99. Okay, let's jump into wine number two. This one I've got a bit more hope for. This is uh, really a classic in terms of Sauvignon Blanc. Marlboro, in many cases, is that, that new benchmark for Sauvignon Blanc. 2022 vintage, uh, very fresh. This actually has a tiny amount of CO2. This wine is under screw cap, so having a little bit of CO2 is no surprise that screw cap actually helps to preserve it. The wine has a touch of a, a green look to it. Again, very common for Sauvignon Blanc. Okay, the aromatics. Oftentimes with Marlboro, uh, you find that guava, passion fruit, some citrus notes to it. This one doesn't have much of that. Uh, this is a little bit of a different style. Uh, actually has a bit of almost like a sweaty characteristic to it. Uh, a little bit off-putting. I've had better versions, uh, certainly much better versions than this. And I'm thinking of the one I reviewed from Costco not all that long ago. That's about $2.50 less than this one. That is by far a superior bottle uh, versus this. I was hoping this was going to deliver a bit more than what it did. The next up is the Global Adventure Series Chianti at $4.99. 
What we have with this one is Chianti at most basic level. This is primarily Sangiovese. Color on this, very pale. Uh, you get a little bit of fade as you get out to the perimeter. Generally, Sangiovese is not going to be a very deeply uh, extracted wine. This one certainly is not. Aromatics on this, uh, a bit of a strawberry fruit character, but rather lean. There's an aggressiveness to it. There's a, a, almost like a, a lean, mean character to it. Uh, this, this smells like this is made from very underripe fruit. Okay, on the palate, it's, uh, it's not all that pleasant. Actually, this is the worst wine that I've tasted so far within this range. Uh, look, if you're, if you're in the horror movies, uh, this, this could be the Pennywise of, of the wine world. It's really lean, green. It's short on the finish, but there's an aggressive characteristic to it. I, I mean, I, I hate to say it, but uh, this one absolutely misses the mark. This reminds me a bit of very old school Chianti against spec to a price point at the most basic minimal level. Uh, this is a wine that I would absolutely avoid. The next wine is the La Cornada Tempranillo Crianza at $4.99. So with Wine 4, this is a part of the world that I'm very familiar with. I've traveled there many times. I have a work project that's linked to this area, and I've just tasted a, a lot of wines from this place. Primarily what you'll find in that part of the world is Tempranillo, Garnacha, and Bobal. This one is all Tempranillo. I'm a little bit surprised at the minimal price point at $4.99. This is a Crianza, which means it spent some time in oak. Uh, the color of the wine is medium, but there is some fade as you get out to the rim. Aromatics definitely has some of that wood character. Uh, not getting any alcoholic heat. Oftentimes wines from this part of the world can be very, very ripe, which results in wines with higher alcohol levels. Uh, this one shows an alcohol level of 13%. So. Okay, so in this case, we have a wine that spent some time in oak. The wine also has a few years bottle age to it, with this being a, a 2018. What can happen with wines that do not have a tremendous amount of structure, the oak can actually impact the wine in a negative sense as the wine ages. That fruit intensity of the wine will start to fade and the oak becomes the most dominant part of the wine. That's what's happened here. So as you uh, taste the wine, initially it does have some, some pleasant characteristic to it but the back palate on this wine is very dry. It's quite aggressive. Uh, I don't think this wine is, is actually over the hill, uh, but it's not showing all that well. And look, it's only $4.99 a bottle. You know, it's an okay everyday table wine, but uh, I think the use of oak in this wine actually diminishes the quality. If it had a screw cap and no oak, it would still have some brightness and freshness that it doesn't have. Uh, not completely off-putting, but you know, nothing to get too excited about. Next up is the Winking Owl Cabernet Sauvignon at three forty-five. So at this point, let's see what the next bottle of Winking Owl shows. Now, the first one was was not good. Uh, let's see what the Cab Soft brings. Uh, color of this wine, medium deep. Uh, it certainly shows a, almost like a, a watery characteristic as you get out to the rim of the glass. So. My feeling is this wine is not going to have a whole lot of depth to it. By the way, this is also non-vintage. Aromatics on the wine, very muted. Uh, there's nothing about the aroma that would indicate this is Cab Sauv. Uh, now, in California, if you have a wine, in this case labeled as Cabernet Sauvignon, it only needs to be 75% of Cab Sauv. My guess is they're using something else that's less expensive, uh, that's blended in in order to hit that price point that's very, very low. On the palate, the wine's very soft, a bit fruity. Uh, again, by the, the taste of it, I would never be able to identify this as Cab Sauv. There's a bit of sweetness there, and I get it. They're maybe trying to hit a very broad audience. Uh, for me, the sweetness in this wine is really quite off-putting. Again, yeah, not a bad bottle of wine if you're looking for something at a crazy cheap price. Uh, certainly nothing to get overly excited about. And I compare this to some of the very inexpensive wines I tried at Trader Joe's, like the Two Buck Chuck, Charles Shaw. This is kind of cut from the same cloth. Um, 
yeah, it is what it is. And if you're looking for something at a very low price point, you know, I, I suppose this is okay. And the final wine is the Scarlet Path Zinfandel from Lodi at $8.99. Okay, now we're off to the sixth and final wine. Hopefully we can end on a strong note because this has been a rough go today. This is the only wine of the six that is not spec down to the penny in terms of packaging. All the others, you can tell the way the wines have been built out in terms of the label, the, the bottle weight, the capsule, the closure, all of it has been spec down to the penny. Uh, this is a rather deluxe, interesting label. It actually feels a bit like felt. Uh, from Lodi, which is a solid area for Zinfandel in California. This is the northern part of the Central Valley in California. The label indicates old vine. That means nothing. That's a marketing term. So there's really no value in that statement whatsoever. The back label indicates an alcohol of 13.5, which is not all that high for Zinfandel from, from that part of the world. Uh, in terms of the, the appearance, medium deep red, there's a bit of fade as you get out to the rim of the glass, very typical of Zinfandel. In terms of the aroma, uh, there's a bit of a dichotomy going on here. There is a jammy, overripe, a bit raisiny characteristic to it, but there is also this green note uh, and this is not all that unusual with Zinfandel. It's actually quite common with the Zinfandel vine. You can find overripe berries, perfectly ripe berries, and those that are a bit underripe as well. This has some of that characteristic. It's a little bit jammy. You do get a little of that red raspberry note to it. Moderate intensity, no alcoholic heat. With 13.5 alcohol, that's, that's about what it should be. On the palate, it carries through from what I... Uh, detected in the aromatics. It does have a little bit of that overripe character to it, but there's an underlying green, uh, slightly vegetal note to it as well. This is not a bad Zen. I've had, certainly had better bottles from Lodi. At that $9 retail price, I think you can probably do better with some other options, either from Lodi or even those that just simply have a California appellation. It's a rather simple wine. It's a little bit like a second coat of beige paint. Uh, you know, the wine is what it is. It's not overly exciting. Uh, but overall, this is this is a decent bottle. I, I wouldn't be completely put off by it. But I think there's better options out there. Well, we've tasted through six wines from Aldi, and there's really no standouts here. My feeling is spend a few more dollars, and you can upgrade tremendously. Uh, looking at some of the other wines I've tasted at Trader Joe's and at Costco and Certainly at independent retailers and even at your local grocery store, I think you can find better wines for the money. That said, I did buy some chocolate at Aldi's. I thought that was actually quite good. I thank you so much for staying to the end of this video as always. If you have some comments on wines from Aldi, please post it down below. I'd love to hear from you. I try to follow up on each and every one of those comments. Until next time, I'll see you somewhere out in the wine world. Cheers.